Hi, everybody. Um, full disclosure, I just did a super long video about brand archetypes, and I spent the better part of um, an hour trying to edit the thing down. It was a monster, and I couldn't do it. And I said, you know what? It would be faster for me. Sorry, there's a storm going on outside, if you can hear that thunder. It's faster for me to try to do this again really quickly and get to my key points that than for me to try to edit the goddamn thing. Super long. Um, I really rather just speak to the camera, but I created this presentation and I'll be damned if I'm not going to use it because it took me several days. You will find lots of things about brand archetypes all over the internet. There's this wheel of, it's like a color wheel and it shows all the different brand archetypes, the 12 archetype types on the wheel. And it's, it's super useful. There's many versions of it and it has, a they have, they're broken down into quadrants and each of the quadrants of the archetype all are driven by a specific motivation. It's a wonderful foundation for you just to build a narrative structure that has an internal logic to it. So I am going to share my screen. I really think, again, like I don't love the presentation PowerPoint type style, but I did put this together and I'm just going to race through it pretty quickly. If you have any questions and or you want to explore this further, you are welcome to contact me. I am an executive brand consultant and fractional CMO, and I am working with clients mostly with startups um, that are series A funded and higher that are ready for their next level of branding. Okay. So what I'm about, what I'm about to show you is um, an overview of the role of archetypes in building brands. What I noticed is that in all of the brand archetype articles online, they talk about really old brands. There's not a lot of mention of new brands or the cultural context that we're living in now. So I'm going to touch upon a couple of those things. So these are the 12 archetypes. Maybe you've seen a version of this wheel before. I'm just going to read this. It represents 12 archetypal characters that have been passed down over millennia through myths and oral traditions from every corner of the globe. I'm sure they're very familiar to you from Star Wars, from the Marvel franchise, um, from Neil Gaiman's books. You know, people are very drawn to the to epic stories with these archetypal characters in them. So here's, I did a, a visual representation. So you can just quickly see, you've got the ruler, the caregiver, the creator, the innocent, the sage, the explorer, the rebel, the magician, the hero, the lover, the jester, and the every man, which I, I regret not saying every person, but it just came out and now I'm done. So I've got to keep going here. Um, that Im Im embedded sexism is really hard to shake. Okay, next next slide. Okay, so these archetypes endure because each one represents an aspect of the human condition. They're all very universal. Every one of them is in all of us. It's why we identify with characters and stories and root for them. And it's why we relate to brands that embody these archetypes effectively. It taps into an unconscious drive that we have. The wheel is divided into four sections, as I said before, organized by motivation. In this quadrant, you have three archetypes driven by a need for order and structure. They are the ruler, the caregiver, and the creator. The ruler brands are hierarchical and fastidious in their standards. If it were a horoscope, these would be the Leos. And you have like the stalwart brands of status, wealth, and luxury like Rolex, American Express, Louis Vuitton, um, British Airways, these embody premium. Um, but I want to show you a little bit about Stripe. Stripe is a payment system that declares itself to be the payment system for the internet. Huge brand promise and puts them in a position and they, you know, and they have largely delivered on that brand promise. They are a ruler in a brand new category. So you don't have to be, um, a legacy brand over you know generations and generations to be a ruler. You just have to be first and successful at being first. And their ambition is big, but it's very specific. Um, and they are they are doing it. They have they created a category. So if you're a, a category creator, 
and you are positioning yourself as something that will power a whole bunch of other companies that can easily be considered a ruler brand. Then we have the caregiver. Um, so Philips, Philips is, you know, an innovative brand and um, it's about technology and innovation, but the way that they communicate their brand attributes and their value is through making it personal. They help, they care and they help. So you, you could think of them as being a kind of a hero, but it's, they have, they embody a certain kind of selflessness. Um, there's an ad of, of in one of their campaigns of a woman who had a, um, Hodgkin's lymphoma and she discovered it through an x-ray through a, on a Philips machine and she invited the the technician who did the x-ray to photograph her and she, she's a dancer and then at the end it's revealed that she was actually his patient and she's saying she would not be there a, and able to continue to be a dancer had it not been for him and him finding the lymphoma and it's you know I cheered up a little bit watching the ad, it's beautifully done. Um, but that is their, the way they show up in the marketplace as a, as a, as a caregiver. And another great contemporary example is Maven Healthcare. They take away the stigma and secrecy of all the various stages of womanhood and all the ways people start families. So from having a, um, a surrogate to menopause to IVF, any way that you come towards to building your family, it is represented in the care that they give. So they, in all of their advertising and marketing, they're saying, we see you, we hear you, we validate you, and we care. Then there's Volvo. This is another one of the old school caregiver brands often mentioned on in articles on the internet about brand archetypes because of its tangible product quality of being a very safe car has very rigorous safety standards and a lot of their communications are about protecting the family and Campbell's soup you know is a definite caregiver brand and then uh, Charles Schwab it is about taking care of each individual way that people want to approach their personal finances so it's very humanistic and it's very nurturing another name for the caregiver is the nurturer um, and then Pampers, very obviously a caregiver. Okay, so that's it. Get in touch for brand and messaging strategy and direction, content production support and startup marketing operations. You can find me on YouTube, there's my website and there's my LinkedIn.